Hey guys, this is the Alley Show, and today I'm going to be telling you guys my life story or my autobiography. On a cold December day, December 10th, I'm not going to say what year because I don't want people using that information against me. Um, on December 10th, I was born. Okay. But before I was born, let's do a little backtracking. My mother, Kimberly Lynn Cox, was pregnant with me. She Her last name wasn't Cox at the time. It was Owens. But she was pregnant with me. Okay. And... Um, it was either Owens or Outlaw, I can't remember. <laughs> but anyway, she was pregnant with me. And she... She had gone into labor with me. Okay, I was her first baby. Um, something, she knew something wasn't right. She was in excruciating pain. Okay. By the way, if you see this... On my arm at any time during the video. Don't judge me. It's just a dry skin problem I'm having right now. Oh my god, that looks so bad. But don't, please don't judge me. Please don't roast me in the comments because you see that. I'm fighting it. It's itchy. I'm handling it. Okay? It's just an issue that I'm facing in my life right now. I think it's allergic itch. I don't know. But anyways. um, So as I was saying... Um, so, she had me two weeks past my due date. So, instead of going nine months, I went nine and a half months. Well, during that time, um, well, the first day of the two weeks, she had told her doctor... The baby's too big. I can't push her out. And her water had already broken and everything. The doctor sent her home. They refused to take me that day. They kept refusing to take me for two more weeks. I almost died inside her. But. On the last day of the two weeks, they finally took me. That was December 10th. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I had, I was born with cerebral palsy, but my parents didn't know it yet because they don't, they can't test you for that right at birth. Um, I mean, they could, but they didn't me. Um, they didn't test my eyes. They didn't test my ears or nothing. They sent me home with, my biological mother thinking that I was a permanently, or not permanently, but um, perfectly healthy, perfectly healthy baby girl. Okay, they, they had to take me the emergency C-section. Okay, well, my mother, let's just say Kim, because she, you'll find out later on in this video why I, you know, why I feel this way about her, but, yeah, anyway, she, she basically, um, she became a drug addict over, off of the painkillers they gave her coming out of the hospital from having me, um, so, when I was born, she stayed doped up on painkillers. And this is an adult channel. This is the only reason I'm willing and able to say this. She stayed doped up on pain pills and painkillers for the first three days of my life. And I know you haven't saw me cuss on this channel, but there may be some cussing in this video. And I'm sorry if you hear that. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to cuss. I'm going to edit because I know that there might be people out there who are adults, but they have the mentality of kids. 
Okay. Um, I'm gonna try to edit, but don't. If you you hear me say a bad word, don't repeat it. If you're mentally like a kid. Um. So, anyways, as I was saying, my mom, my grandmother biologically, um, her name was Diane. She found me laying in my crib in a poopy diaper, um, not being taken care of at all, screaming at the top of my lungs. Kim laying on the bed, passed out on pain pills, doing absolutely nothing. Okay, she took me. She took me and started taking care of me. When I was seven months old, she went through the court system and legally adopted me. So I became legally her baby. Not Kimberly's. Okay. I had a good childhood, although it had its ups and downs. She was married to a guy. Well, first of all, my biological father's name was Bucky Keith Wallace. <clears throat> he is not in the picture. He still isn't to this day. He doesn't even know me. He denied me until I was six weeks old and he had a DNA test done. That proved I was his once and for all. He still thinks I'm 16 years old. No, I'm not. I'm 25. Anyways. So, he hasn't held me until the day I, or since I was six weeks old. He hasn't seen me since then. I've got a biological grandmother on his side of the family who... She still wants to meet me. She still wants to get to know me. And if there's ever a day that he decides that he wants to meet me, you know, as long as he's willing to come to where I live, I'll meet him. But I'm not calling him daddy. He hasn't wanted me to for 25 years. I'm not going to start it now. I've got a daddy. And his name is Bobby Crabtree. And I love him. Anyways, all that aside. You know, my daddy, now, he was married to my grandma, biological grandma, now mama, Diane. Okay. Um, and he was just 27 years old when I was born. Two years older than I am right now. So, he, um, he, he helped take care of me. Although, he partied a lot in his younger days. Sorry if I keep covering the mic. I'm trying to keep my phone in my hand. But, he partied a lot back in those days. Okay? He was in and out of jail a lot for petty crimes. I'm not going to say what. But. Um, so I had that riddle in my childhood. There was a lot of time spent missing my daddy, but you know what? I still had a good life. I still had a good childhood. When I was seven, okay, you know, birth through six was, had more downs than up, okay? But then when I was seven... <laughs> My daddy fled the state. I'm not going to say why. He fled the state of South Carolina. Me and mom followed nearly a year after when we could save up the money and the bank got the approval for us to get a loan and follow him up here. I sucked a baby bottle until I was six years old because mama wanted me to stay her baby for as long as I could. And so, I was picked on at school, and when I got home from school, 
she would have for me a bottle of milk sitting beside the couch. And so, as a result, <coughs> that was how that went. But finally, when I was seven, and we were about to move to Ohio, I told her, that's it. I love you, Mama, but no more bottles. No more baby bottles. I'm done with the baby bottles. And she asked me why. And I told her, I said, I'm nearly eight. It's time I move up to at least a sippy cup, don't you think? And I had been drinking out of cups over the years, but something had always up until that day drew me back to the baby bottle. And after that day, I said no more. Okay, and then again, you know, me and my mama, after that, we stayed up here till I was about 12, I'd say. We moved back down to South Carolina another t one one other time. Okay, we stayed there for a little while. Daddy persuaded us to come home. Come home to the apartment we lived in. Okay. Come to find out when mama. Well, me and mama were out of the state. Daddy did bad things. He cheated on my mama. Or so my mama thinks. There was never any proof given that. He cheated on her. Um. But. Needless to say, we got to Ohio, and Mama beat the girl up. <clears throat> and then, everything was all good and dandy until I was 15. Daddy left Mama for a woman. Now, I love her to pieces. She's in the living room right now asleep. <laughs> okay. Her name is, well, I'm not going to give away her name because that's her private information. I'm not going to give out anything private about her, but he left mama for her. After that, we moved down to South Carolina again when I was 15. And that's where my life changed forever. I went to high school. We left in the middle of my ninth grade year at high school. I moved to Dillon, South Carolina and finished my ninth grade year. The house that I lived in was riddled with bed bugs. Okay. By the time I was in 10th grade, the, the, I, I was at the school for the blind. My 10th grade year at school went perfectly fine, but mama, her health started to deteriorate. So we moved in with my, whoop, with my aunt Crystal and uncle Derek. They treated me like an absolute kid even though i was 17 18 maybe even 19 Woo! my phone is hot by this point I, i'm gonna try to hurry this video up okay because my phone is really hot like my camera bump my case ain't hot but my camera bump Woo! baby that's hot i guess not so hot that it's burning me per se but it is hot yeah, yeah. But anyways, as I was saying, um, so the, basically, where was I? Oh, yeah. They treated me like a kid. They grounded me if my grades didn't meet their expectations. 
Now, if it's a detail of my life that I'm just too embarrassed or too, you know, uncomfortable talking about it, I'm just going to admit it. Because I, you know, this is an autobiography, you know, where I tell you why I am the way I am today. This is not a day-by-day, -day, blow by blow of my life. I can't recount for you every day, but I can tell you the, the big things. Okay, so anyway, my biological mother was back in my life at this point. And she offered me, <clears throat> at a time when I was being treated like a child, she offered me her and her husband, Kevin, which played the role as of stepdaddy while I was down there. And, you know, in my eyes, he still has a place in my heart, even though he's moved on and he's got another girlfriend and he's got a kid with her. But anyway, he, he's still got a place in my heart. But anyways, he and her offered me a home what I thought was going to be a stable home I'm sorry if there's tears and they offered me a stable home and a good life and considering my life sucked at the time when I was offered that I went with it I said yeah if you can give me a good life, if you can give me a good home where I know I'm going to be taken care of, yes, I'll move in with you. Because at the time, as I told you guys, I had the mental capacity of a six-year-old. I was not capable of taking care of myself. I couldn't even pour myself anything to drink. I couldn't do anything like that. And if you guys remember the YouTube channel, Happy Life, if you saw that YouTube channel... Um, it's still out there. I used to run it, but it got hacked. So, I cut all ties with it. But anyways, as I was saying, you know, I moved in. I went along with the promise of a stable life, a stable home. And I went along with that. Things were good at first. We moved into a new place. We were a happy little family. I was going places, spending the night places. But then Kim caused Kevin's car to blow up, trying to get her drug fix. And things went south. I know you guys are thinking, oh, you know, you, you look like you haven't, you haven't missed a meal in your life. You you look like you overeat. Well, you know what? After that car blew up, I didn't know from day to day. I'm going to put you guys down for a second. I didn't know from day to day whether I was going to get to eat or not. Kevin brought home food from Burger King when he could. But eventually, he got reprimanded for bringing food home from Burger King for us. Because me and my little brother Eli lived there by this point. And Kim would take my phone from me when I lived there and use it to make her drug runs. And so, as a result of this... um. I didn't have access to a cell phone. And then, you know, as I said, I didn't know. The house was ate up with bed bugs once again. The apartment we lived in. Um, there was dog poop everywhere. The place was filthy. I stayed sick. I had been off my level thyroxin for like six months. Why does my nose keep itching? Something does not want me to tell this story, but I don't care. I'm going to tell it. People need to know. People need to know. 
about me. People need to know about my life. Let me get you guys. But anyways, as I was saying, um, I had been off my thyroid medicine for six months. So naturally, I was sick. I was fatigued all the time. I was an emotional wreck. I, I couldn't think straight. I I was just not a healthy girl. I and mind you I have a big family and every member of that family claimed they love me. They still do. Even the people on Kevin's side claimed they loved me. But on October fourth 2017 when I was 20 years old a neighbor God bless their soul I don't know who they were but if I knew I would thank them personally they called Child Protective Services on Kim. Child Protective Services got there. They figured out that I was not a kid. So they called Adult Protect Protective Services in there to see me. I wouldn't let them in because it was a stranger and I know about stranger danger, but Kevin had to open the door to get me to let them in. Okay, and, you know, I let them in, okay. They saw how filthy the place was. And I told them, uh, no, they asked me, you know, are you on any sort of medications? Are you okay? And then I told him, I said, I have hypothyroidism and this and that. And they asked me, how long have I been off my medicine? Kevin tried to lie to him. They pulled me aside and they said, don't lie to us. You can tell us anything. I remember that poor, that gracious woman's name who, who told me that her name was Crystal Graham. And God bless her soul. She was the woman that changed my life. She, they got me out of there. When they found out how long I had truly been off my thyroid medicine, they called an ambulance and I was rushed to the hospital. They called around while I was in that hospital and nobody, all these people that said they loved me, and nobody would take me. Nobody had room for me. Except my grandpa, Bobby Outlaw. And if you watch this video, Papa, thank you. Thank you for taking me on that day when everybody else said they couldn't. Thank you. And again, I'm sorry for all the tears in this video. But, you know, this is things that are hard memories that I never wanted to relive, but I'm reliving them for the purpose of this video because you guys need to know about them. These were hard times in my life, but for the 13, 13 or so of you who love me, this is how I got to be the Alley Show you guys know and love. This is how I got to be who I am today. And you guys need to know this. Because you need, you guys need to know my life isn't all, never was all box openings, rainbows, and unicorns. You know, and happy stuff. So, as I was saying, um, I lived there from then until May 28th, 
2018. Between that time, I had a microwave in my room. I had a mini fridge in my room and a snack drawer on my desk in my room. I put on a lot of weight during that time. I was already big beforehand, but Papa said when he got me out of that situation, my cheeks were sunken in. He said I did not look good. I, I had a pair of pajamas on. I, I, I'm supposed to be wearing an AFO. I didn't have my AFO because I left it over there at that house. I, I, you know, it, it was hard. But I spent a lot of time by myself. I walked up and down the dirt road in an effort to try to lose some weight. Okay. And, but I couldn't do it on my own with just that. So I went to the doctor and got put on Adipex. They started wanting my Adipex. Um, and so, yeah. So as I was saying on that day, May 28, 2017, or no, 2018 rather, I... I moved up here to Ohio with my daddy Bobby and Miss Teresa, who I was soon to call Mama. And I was 21 years old, still had the mental capacity of a six-year-old, still playing with the dolls that you feed them bottles, which I don't play with those now. But anyways, I was still playing with them. And she helped me, my mama now, Miss Teresa, she showed me, that's her name, don't, you know, I had to differentiate, but <clears throat> she showed me how to be an adult. I'm still learning, but she, she has shown me how to be the best me I could be, and I'm eternally grateful for that to her. I'm eternally grateful that God put us in each other's lives. And I feel like he did it for a reason. She needed me. I needed her. Mainly at first, I needed her. Now she needs me. And I need her. So we're, we're as thick as thieves together. But, you know. And even within these past four years, my life has had a lot of ups and downs. Okay. But that's my bi my autobiography. My I forgot to mention earlier in the video, my blindness. I found out I was blind when I was six months old. My Aunt Elizabeth, who was a nurse, checked me because um, she noticed I wasn't tracking. I wasn't looking. I wasn't looking at people. I don't know how my cerebral palsy was found out or how much time or how what type i have i don't know what my life expectancy is with any of this i'm not dying so i don't think that but i'm 25 what does that tell you so i feel like i'm gonna live a long life but anyways, so that's what, that's what my life was like. That's how I am the person I am today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please click like, share, comment, and subscribe. And share this video with your friends if you want them to see it. Bye for now.